Hey there, in this video I'm going to show you how to get started with Prisma Cloud. Let's walk through the onboarding flow of the Prisma console. After having signed up with my email address, I can set up a new Prisma service through the console UI. The UI instructs me to install the Prisma CLI on my machine. and then run the prisma login command with a token it generated for me. Next, I'm receiving instructions for creating a new prisma service. Switching again to my terminal, I'm using the prisma init command to create the local files for my first prisma hello world service, which will be deployed to a demo server in prisma cloud. Further following the instructions, I'm now running the prisma deploy command to deploy my hello world service to the demo server. The Prisma Cloud dashboard displays various metrics for my service, like the response times, number of events, or data usage. Because the service was only just deployed, there is no data yet. The deployment history indicates when changes are being made to the configuration of my service, such as an update to the data model that defines the API. Speaking of the data model, what does it actually look like? Let's head back to my text editor to investigate the files that were previously created when I ran the prisma init command. The datamodel.graphql file contains the definition of my data model. Right now, it just contains a single user type. I can add another field to that type and run prisma deploy again to update the API of my service. When the command has finished running, the changes are shown in my deployment history. The data browser lets me view and modify the data that I currently have stored in the database. Again, because the service is new, we don't see anything yet. To create a new database record, also called node, I can just click the create node button and provide the required information. Finally, I can also interact with my services API in a GraphQL playground. After having added a new user with a mutation, this new node is now also being displayed in the data browser. The last thing I want to demonstrate in this video is how you can add a Prisma server which is running on the infrastructure of some cloud provider and manage it through your Prisma Cloud workspace. Therefore, I have already deployed a Prisma server to AWS Fargate following a tutorial from the Prisma blog. The Prisma server on Fargate is backed by a MySQL instance running on RDS in my AWS account. Note that the Prisma server could also be running on DigitalOcean, Google Cloud, or any other cloud provider. I first need to tell Prisma Cloud how it can connect to my Prisma server. I can do this by clicking the Add Server button in the console and provide the connection details for the Prisma server hosted in my AWS account. The server is now available as a deployment target in my Prisma Cloud workspace. Next, I want to make use of that new Prisma server by deploying a new service to it. Back in my terminal, I'm running Prisma init again, but this time I'm not going to deploy to a demo server, as the CLI now provides me with the option to deploy to the Fargate server, the one which I just added to my Prisma Cloud account. Once deployed, the service can be managed via the Prisma Cloud console as well. To recap, the GraphQL API of this Prisma service is running on an AWS Fargate cluster in my own AWS account. The API is backed by a MySQL database on RDS, which also lives in my AWS account. Prisma Cloud lets me connect to Prisma servers running on any cloud provider. To learn more about deploying Prisma servers and Prisma services, visit the tutorial section in our documentation. 